What's up, y'all? Today we're talking about why God told me to stop drinking as a Christian. All right, y'all, I'm letting y'all into my life again, all right? I'm letting y'all into my life, but to be honest, I really hope that this video blesses y'all in a major way. And matter of fact, if y'all like this video, man, please make sure that you like it. Please share it and give it to somebody that it can be blessed by. And please subscribe. If you haven't subscribed yet, please subscribe and check out my other videos, man. I'm more than sure these videos will bless you and help you in so many ways. All right. Why God told me to stop drinking as a Christian, man? All right. Now, I'm going to keep it real. I'm going to start from the beginning, y'all. How, how, you know, so I, got, I feel like I got a whole drinking story in my life for the reason why things happen the way they happened and the reason why I am the way that I am now. All right, so stay with me, y'all. Please stay with me. All right, let's go back to the beginning. Living with my grandparents, I think that's first where I encountered, like, drinking, right? And my house wasn't really even a, a house with people that drink, right? But when I first moved to live with my grandparents when I was younger, I noticed my grandma was drinking, like, daily. She probably wouldn't drink a lot, but she would drink daily, probably, like, one drink or two drinks. I would see her, like, you know, pour a little bottle, a little clear bottle, whatever, in her drink, but then I see her put soda in it. And, you know, I didn't pay no attention to it. I don't think I knew this. I knew what it was, but I seen her doing it when I was younger. But I also remember my grandmother always talking about, you know, when she watched the news, that these people kept getting into accidents around this, some curve, right? Around some curve that was close to the house. They would always get into accidents, like, Every other week, my grandma would always be like, oh, this person just died because they hit the curb or, oh, this person just died. Like it was so many people that kept getting in car accidents because they were drinking and driving. Right. And then one time I remember later on, my grandpa, I remember waking up at like three in the morning, my grandma and my grandfather arguing. And that ain't never happened. Right. So. But when I when I got up, I seen that my grandfather was mad about her drinking. He wanted her to stop. And they got in an argument about it. And I promise I never seen her drink again from that day forward. I never seen her drink again from that day. Now, when my grandmother kept telling me people kept getting into these accidents, that was kind of like scaring me. Me, I wasn't ever really drink, thinking about drinking at the time. It wasn't on my mind. I was young. I didn't care about it. All I wanted to do was play basketball and be around girls and stuff with my friends and my cousins, right? But as I got older, I seen people drinking, right? As I got into high school, I seen people drinking and my cousins was drinking. And I remember because I had heard about all these people dying all the time, I, I never wanted to drink, right? I never wanted to drink and I always wanted to keep my cousins safe. So I would always be the designated driver. Like all the time, I would be like, nah, I'm driving. Or they'll be like, you want something? I'm like, nah, I'm good. So I'm always the driver. I was always the driver. I always wanted to keep them safe. All the time, right? Like when I was in high school. So I I, I, I think I might have took like a taste or whatever sometimes, but I didn't really drink. I didn't drink at all, right? Maybe a taste of beer or something like that, but I wasn't like drinking the whole thing. I just tasted it. So as years got, as years went on, I went to college. When I went to college, I wasn't drinking at first. But then, I can't remember. I might have been like 23, 22, 22, 23, something like that. And I think I had a birthday. And I said, all right, I'm going to drink. And I started to drink that night. And I would drink a little bit. And one night, I actually passed out, y'all. because, And I think it's because I didn't know how to drink. So I didn't know you know, how much you supposed to drink. <laughs> Don't laugh at me, but I passed out, right? And, you know, sometimes I would drink because I'm going to be around girls, you know what I'm saying? And I know how I'm going to feel, how they going to feel. This was back in the past, y'all. This is when I was having sex. I already know what was going to happen, right? So I'm drinking to also make myself feel better, I guess. I don't know. And they drinking all, we had parties and stuff like that, whatever it is. But it's like I never really cared about it, even when I was drinking then. Like, it's like, kind of like I was trying to drink, or I guess I was trying to be like other people or whatever it was. So, you know, I'm still doing it. It's probably a few years. Now I pass out again 
And like, I remember this was like 2010. I passed out again. And this is when I had a girlfriend. And I remember I was supposed to be with her that night. And I went to a party and I passed out. This girl was so mad at me. She thought I had cheated on her and everything, <laughs> right? But I was really at my man house up the street from her house because I couldn't go nowhere and they didn't have her number to wake her up, whatever. So, you know, a few years go by. A few years go by and I'm like, man, I don't really care about this drinking stuff, man. So now I'm just drinking wine. I'm like, man, I don't really care about this. I'm drinking wine. People making fun of me because I'm a guy and I'm just choosing to drink wine. Like, it's crazy, y'all. And like even my brothers, my 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 brothers would just be, you know, just trying to clown me and all this other stuff. And I still wouldn't do it. And then I stopped. I remember having this thought in my mind. I'm like, man, I don't really care about drinking. Like, why am I drinking for? Even when I'm around girls, like, why do I have to drink? Right? I don't I don't care about drinking. You know what I'm saying? Now, I did end up stopping. And then a few years later, after I stopped, I did drink one night when I was with my brother and them. And my stomach started to hurt really bad. And I was like, oh, okay, God, I get it. You don't want me to drink no more. So I'm going to admit that. That's true. And ever since that day, I haven't drank anymore, even though that was like one night or one day. But what I want to talk about is why I believe God made me stop drinking or why God actually caused me to stop. For one, all my life, y'all see the story from, you know, and my grandma was actually the only person that drank in the house. And when she stopped, nobody else drank. My grandpa ain't drink. My grandma ain't drink. My mom ain't drink. My aunts ain't drink. Now, outside the family, people drink. But within the, within the immediate family, nobody really drank at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, even when they went places, they still didn't drink. Even when they was at parties, they still didn't drink. And I think God blessed me that way. But as I got closer to God, because it was a few years after I started to drink, that I started to get really closer to God. And... You know, I would see everybody drinking and, and still drinking. And I would see all the Christians still drinking. And I'm like, why is everybody still drinking? Like, don't they know what that does? Can't they see what happens? And then people would say certain things like, well, drinking is not a sin. Well, drinking is not a sin. And I would be like, you know, that's right. You know, and I would battle with it back and forth in my mind. And I'm thinking to myself, man. It's no way possible God wants me to drink. It's no way possible God wants us to drink. Now, I know some of y'all, some of y'all who, who, who don't be diving in this Bible really, right? And I know y'all want to feel, y'all want to feel how y'all want to feel. I understand, man. Y'all want to do what y'all want to do. But I took the time to study the Bible, right? I took the time to say, you know what? Instead of me thinking about what these people saying to me, instead of me trying to let them lead me, and, and think and cause me to think that it's okay to do this. How about I dig into the Bible and find out? Now, a lot of people might be like, well, you can drink because Jesus turned water into wine. Y'all know it, man. Everybody say it. Y'all probably said it too. Would Jesus turn water into wine? Well, 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 this what Jesus drank in the Last Supper, right? <laughs> now, that's true. That's true, right? But I don't think y'all also don't understand. You got to understand what the wine represents. Wine represents something totally different in the Bible. Matter of fact, water represents a lot of different things in the Bible. Water represents cleansing, represents changing. Wine represents who Jesus is. So he turned water into wine, right? So it went from the cleansing when he saved you, he cleansed you, he changed you. Now he filled you with the spirit. That's what wine represents. What is the spirit? Love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness gentleness, selflessness. That's what wine represents. So a lot of people may not understand that, but that's actually true. You understand what I'm saying? So I want y'all to take that. For one, I want y'all to take that. Two, I want y'all to understand that in the Bible, when I did that deep dive to figure out how does God actually feel about this? You know what I found? There was a lot of scriptures about drinking. A lot of scriptures about drinking. Like, let me repeat that. A lot about drinking. I'm about to go over some right now, just in case y'all don't believe me. So these are some of the scriptures that I came across when I was doing the deep dive. I've also been reading in the book of Isaiah. I'm about to finish the book of Isaiah. And it, it's been talking about that too. But I'm not about to pull that scripture up. 
But let's go over some scriptures that I found about drinking, okay? Proverbs 20 verse 1 says, Wine is a mocker, strong drink, a brawler, a brawler, <laughs> and whoever is led astray by it is not wise. Mm, this is the book of wisdom, y'all. Strong drink is what I found in this Bible. What is strong drink? Could that be hard liquor? Could it be hard liquor? Is it hard liquor? Could it be beer? I'm sure it's whatever God has not blessed this ground to be with. The Bible says this, and it's multiple scriptures about this. Proverbs 23 verse 19 says, Who has woe? Who has sorrow? Who has strife? Who has complaints? Who has needless bruises? Who has bloodshot eyes? Those who linger over wine. Who go to sample bowls of mixed wine. Do not gaze at wine when it is red, when it sparkles in the cup, when it goes down smoothly. In the end, it bites like a snake and poisons like a viper. Your eyes will see strange sights and your mind will imagine confusing things. You will be like one sleeping on the high seas, lying on top of rigging. They hit me, you will say, but I'm not hurt. They beat me, but I don't feel it. When I will, when will I wake up so I can find another drink? Isaiah 5 verse 11 says, Woe to those who rise early in the morning that they may run after strong drink, who tarry late in the evening as wine inflames them. 1 Peter 4 says, Since therefore Christ suffered in the flesh, arm yourselves with the same way of thinking, for whoever has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, so as to live for the rest of the time in the flesh no longer for human passions, but for the will of God. For the time that is past suffices for doing what the Gentiles want to do, living in sensuality, passions, drunkenness, orgies, drinking parties, and lawless idolatry. That's just a few of the scriptures that I came across, y'all, when I was... Uh, researching and, and studying, diving deep into this Bible about drinking, right? So when I look at that, I see that God says to keep ourselves away from this. The Bible says drinking parties. The Bible talks about strong drink. It tells us all the evil things that happen, y'all. And, and I'm only going over just a few. So if you will, definitely look that up, search that up and find it for yourselves. Because I know a lot of people like to fight that. Right. But I also tell people not just what the Bible says, but why does God say that? There's a reason behind why he says don't do these things. So what could the why be? So what could the why be? What happens when we drink? You know, one thing that I learned is that the more we drink, it enhances how we feel. Does it not? Now, a lot of people say, well, you know, you could drink and not get drunk. But what happens when you drink a little bit? Does not drinking wine or liquor, regular liquor, does it not enhance your sensuality? Think about it. Have you not drank just a little bit and now you feel like you want somebody to touch your body? Have you not drank a little bit and then all of a sudden you feel some type of feeling? You ain't drunk yet, but you feel some type of feeling creeping up. You ain't drunk, but is it not causing you to feel a way? Remember, Paul consistently talks about being sober-minded and being ready at all times. How are you sober-minded? And guess what? I know he's not just talking about that stuff, right? He's talking about your fleshy mind. But people say drinking is not a sin. And I would say drinking is not a sin. But is drinking not a temptation? God tells you not to sin. But is drinking not a part of something that can lead you quicker to sin? Now, some may say, well, you got to have self-control. Well, the Bible tells you to flee from temptation, right? The Bible tells you to cut your arm off if it causes you to do something. The Bible tells you to gauge your eye out if it causes you to sin. That means God wants to keep us away from certain things that cause us. Now, somebody can be like, well, you can go anywhere and do anything and it can cause you to do something. Yeah, but there's certain things 
that can lead us to it even faster, right? There's certain things that can creep inside of us where we have less control. And liquor is one. Don't you see what it does? Look how many people die from liquor. Look how many domestic violence situations happen from people who drink. Look how you have no control over yourself when you drink. Now, I would say it's not a sin, but it causes you to sin. Do you think God would rather us drink? Or do you think that he would rather us not drink? God doesn't tell you to drink. He tells you how to drink, right? It, it, it speaks about not drinking like this, right? But he also tells you the bad things. And it also tells you what happens from drinking. This is why it also explains why we shouldn't drink. Now, the scripture don't tell you to not drink drink it tells you why you shouldn't and why it's not wise and what happens so now if you're over here and you're abstaining from sex you think if you drink you won't get a tempting feeling you think now all of a sudden you're not thinking about your ex or the last time you had sex or this and that and this do you not know alcohol increases sensuality inside of you it, 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 it enhances it not only that y'all Remember, we have to be advocates for Christ. Remember, we are examples of Christ, right? We are followers and believers of Christ. Now, we have a whole world out there that drinks. Everybody drinks. And people think they got to drink to have fun and do all of this and do all of that. But if we are set apart because we are holy, right? We are set apart because we are holy, when we, when we go around other people, when we do everything that they do, especially drinking, how do we look different? You tell me, how am I supposed to be different than they are if I'm over here doing what they're doing? But then if that person needs me in that moment, if I am to be an example of Christ in that moment, how am I going to be able to do that if I am drinking and this thing that I am drinking is intoxicating me and taking control over me, right? You can say, well, I can drink one drink. Again, I talk about sensuality. You can say, well, I can drink two drinks. But then I talk about sensuality. I talk about self-control. I talk about us being set apart. God would rather us not do these things. Why? Because it can lead us to sin. It can lead us to being in bad situations. It can lead us to not being an example around others. It can lead to people thinking that we're just like them, right? We're not ready in that moment. We're not sober-minded. We're not displaying Christ. And also, even drinking can cause me not to be so kind. Even drinking can cause me not to be forgiving to others. Even drinking can cause me to be more selfish and prideful in that moment. It's so much that when we drink, it causes us to be more like the world. How are we supposed to be different? How are we supposed to be the, the example of Christ when we're drinking alcohol? Y'all want to know one last thing that I learned in this Bible about drinking? And I ain't heard not one person ever say this. But from my deep dive, and of course, that wasn't a deep dive. I was just going over some scriptures that I found before in the past. But you know one thing that I found when I was studying? The only time that God was okay with people drinking wine was when they were celebrating him. Well, how do you know this, Rudy? Well, when Jesus turned water into wine, it was a marriage under God. That was a celebration of covenant. The other one, the Last Supper, was that not of God? Was that not a celebration of Jesus? Was that not something towards God? Outside of that... You don't see God being okay with you drinking wine. And notice it was only, only wine. But I already told y'all what that wine represents when it comes to Jesus, right? But outside of that, y'all, when you see anybody drinking, the disciples, Jesus, whatever, none of it was out there having fun. Y'all say, well, it was a wedding. I told y'all that was a celebration under God. God was happy. He wanted his people to be happy and joyful. He turned it into wine so that they can all celebrate even more under God. So everything that God represents 
That's what the wine represent. Love, peace, joy, freedom, right? From stress. Because now that you're in this covenant, now you have everything that God has. That was a representation of God's relationship with us. You understand what I'm saying? So there's so many things that we could take away. There's so much more that I could talk about when it comes to this drinking thing. But I ain't about to make this video longer than what it is. But I want y'all to understand something. Y'all, we supposed to be advocates. We supposed to be soldiers in Christ. We supposed to be the examples of Christ outside. So people who don't know Jesus like that, people who doing everything that I used to do, why do I still look like what I used to do? Why am I looking similar to them? Now, we can be relatable, but we relatable because of what I used to do. We relatable because I treat you with respect and love and kindness. But I still got to exemplify that without doing what they do. You understand? The Bible is very clear. I definitely, I definitely suggest everybody study the scriptures about alcohol instead of just assuming what we think this is. I am free from that alcohol thing. I don't got to wake up thinking, oh man, I ain't drinking no more. I don't got to wake up because I slipped up and had sex with somebody by mistake. I don't got to drink and then forget what I did the next day. Y'all tell me where that's godly. How is that godly? Jesus said that he's going to appear when we don't expect it. What, what day you think he's going to appear? When do you think he's going to show up? When most of the world is out there acting wild. Why would I be out there acting wild with them? You understand what I'm saying? Look, y'all. I understand how y'all might feel. But I, I love y'all. The only reason I'm telling y'all this is because God stopped me. I never really cared about drinking like that, but it still stopped me. But I care about y'all. And God does too. He brought me to this video. And I know other people who got this revelation as well. And been transformed and changed. They understand. I'm sober-minded. I understand when I drink what it can cause. So you know what I'm going to do? Let me stay away from that. Right? I would rather stay away from that. Now, if I do something by mistake, it ain't because I was drinking and the drinking enhanced and pushed me to do the very thing that God doesn't want me to do. But guess what? The enemy wants you to drink. Because the world drinks. And look at everything that happens when people drink. Why would you want to be a part of that? Wouldn't you want to stay away from it? That's all I'm saying. There's a lot of protection in not drinking. There's a lot of love in not drinking. There's a lot of sober-mindedness in not drinking. There's a lot of more being Christ-like in not drinking. God can use you when you don't drink. But he can't use you when you're under the influence and don't have so much control or mind control within yourself. How can you be convicted? How can you allow the spirit to lead you when you're drinking? You can't. This is why Paul said to be sober-minded. You could be ready at all times. We got to be ready at all times, y'all. All right. Well, I hope this video blessed y'all. If y'all like this video, please hit the like button. Please subscribe right now. Please share this video with somebody that it will help. And please look up the scriptures. I know I just went through a couple or a few, but there's so many more. And make sure that y'all dig in this Bible about anything. If the world says something is okay or God is okay with it, then go find out what God says about it. Because me, I don't believe everything people say. I'm going to go find out what God said about it. I heard you. Let me go see if it's true. That's what I do. I don't just sit there and, oh, uh, no. Let me find out. Jesus, pray about it and then go jump in the scripture. And y'all want to know one thing that I did before I end this. The, the one thing that I did in the past when I started to look up this, all I did was type in, what does the Bible say about drinking? Then I found all this stuff out about drinking, multiple scriptures. Then I found out drinking parties. God tells you not to be a part of the drinking parties. Then I found about strong drink. Right? Being a brawler and wine, being a mocker, and that it's not wise to be that way. And that 
And that people who drink are people who are in sorrow. Literally, that's written in the Bible. Those who drink, it's for the dead. It's for those who are dying on the inside. Don't be mad at me. That's what the scripture says. When we are strong, we don't got to drink. Be strong. Let's be strong together. I love y'all, man. I'm going to get it y'all when I get it y'all.